you know, the idea that I would create something that's going to elevate tattooing is pretty ridiculous, you know, because people are going to do what they're going to do. So I might be able to do a good tattoo now and then, and somebody's going to get it. And there's still going to be a thousand other people lining up to get fucking really horrific tattoos. He's a well-rounded tattooer. He has, you can tell he has like a, a background in traditional Americana. You know, I think that's kind of like working with Hardy, where he got that from. And like working with Aaron Kane and Marcus Pacheco, that biomechanical work that he does. I would say his style is definitely rooted in Japanese work from the, the masters. He's taken notes from like Horiyoshi 3, Philip Blue. And he's well-rounded in all these different facets of tattooing. He's coined the grime style, you know, and that's all taken from these educated styles of tattooing and mastering them and then flipping them. I like the unexpectedness of his work, where, you know, I'm a fan of all the black cloth stuff and the silhouette and the really strong images, but then he'll just bust out some, like, you know, pain in the ass little single needle stuff just to show, like, skill. You know, I think anybody who has identifiable work, you know, whether it's traditional or Japanese or, you know, just their own style, people are going to want to collect from you. I think tattooers took notice quicker than just fans, because I think when you're in it, you can kind of see when something is special. It just seemed like he had some other ideas in his head that he wanted to get out, and not just emulate his favorite tattooers. You know, Grime started doing yes. lots of eyeballs with fire and... Uh, is this the kind of fire that people would copy from him? The second he started doing this kind of stuff with this signature fire, it was horrible how many people were, were ripping them off. It, everybody started doing that. It, it was so obvious what they were looking at when they would draw a tattoo. I did a, some like strange style of fire for a little while that people definitely definitely borrowed some of that stuff. But the thing is it wasn't that good. <laughs> but they borrowed it. I thought that, you know, I thought they borrowed it. Whatever. But it wasn't that good. I, you know, I would never tattoo that flame now. <laughs> I guess it just it made me it made me frustrated but it also made me just try to be more creative, you know? Try to make me push, push my work in a way which wouldn't be able to be copied in a way that would make it look like I did it. I think my work, for the most part, is too specific for the client, I think, to be taken and just like pieced together in another way and then look like, you know, a straight rip off of me. That's part of what makes Grime Grime, is that he doesn't want his tattoos to look like anybody else's. He wants to express himself, desperately express himself through what he's creating. And why, why not? That's what, what he's here for. But it, it also kind of spills over in ideas like, I guess I'm going to submit work to that, that person for that book they're publishing. And he'd be like, I'm just going to publish my own book. Why wouldn't I just publish my own book? Why do that? You know, and he, that's how he thinks. He's like, why don't I just create it myself? When he stayed with me in Richmond, I would go to sleep, you know, one o'clock, two o'clock in the morning, and he'd stay up all night with headphones on and tons of tracing paper and just like, you know, just really aggressively drawing all night, and then he would be up before me. That definitely made me feel a little lazy, having him on my couch doing that every night. This is a picture of Grime working on his sketchbook or journal that eventually turned into a two-year autopsy. He had a brand new sketchbook that I think Chris Duncan had given him for an art show and the idea was a year would go by and him and a bunch of different people would fill up their own sketchbooks. He would do caricatures of himself, he would do collage, he would you know write, he would put anything that he was working on. It was like a diary, a visual diary. He was traveling a lot too, we would go do conventions in Europe. We did a Tintin's convention two years in a row in Paris. That was great, because we would go with enough time to explore the city. There was a couple days in Paris where he would go out by himself with his camera and just do like self-portraits with a, you know, with a timer. He wasn't just tattooing. 
everything was an art project at that point because he wanted to use it for material for the book. I like reading about what he's thinking. You know, on one hand I like to stay fairly private, but it is a little cathartic, but it also is like, and maybe in two ways, you know, I, I put it out there as an exercise, but I also, the writing itself is an exercise for me, you know, I enjoy writing. The words I choose and how I, how I express the thought and the feeling, it's rewarding, it's real, I like it, you know. When Grime did the book to your autopsy, it was like two years on the road of tattooing, but mostly two years of like torture, torturing himself over predominantly women, which everyone enjoys doing. Do you feel like a lot of people come and try to speak to you about like some of the things that are more personal? No, I don't think people know. Most people don't. Maybe they just don't feel comfortable doing it, you know? Maybe they just feel a little uncomfortable going, so like, hey, so, you know. I read about that one part where you're, you know, whatever, spilling your guts. But we, should we talk about what you're tattooing me? Yeah, I think most people probably have a little more tech than that. In yeah. some ways, you know. He sent it to like a psychologist to, to read and then critique it. And the psychologist said something like, I'm you know, paraphrasing, but it said something like, this is the most, you know, self-righteous, like bunch of masturbation and, you know, pompous, blah, blah, blah. I just crushed it. And he was so excited that like this, he got this horrible review from like a psychologist about it. To your autopsy, I think it's an example of travel, torture, hard work, pays off. It seems the more frustrated and tortured he is, the work gets better. You know, we all do, but he's almost like chipping away his life to, you know, make it. I think the people, whoever has his tattoos, they have a piece of his life. Being this type of tattoo artist, like fully custom every day, I think it's a really stressful life. Oh my god, fucking people! You know, he's definitely a kind of a celebrity of tattooing and uh, he seems to not have much of his personal time sometimes and it's, it's hard for some people, yeah. I don't know if I've seen Grime get burnt out or in a, a burnout phase of tattooing, but he always kind of seems like he was up too late drawing. You know what I mean? Like he, he always just seems a little tired or preoccupied. He looks like he's always sort of stressing about whatever project he's working on. I don't know, some of it's my ego, I think. You know, not wanting to say no to a project or a thing that I know that I can do or I'd like to try. I, although, I, you know, I've, I've obviously learned how to say no over the years and, and I'm, I'm better at it as time passes, but there's still some things that I think maybe get out of my control and that creates difficulties for me. Yeah, but that's shit. Conventions suck. Right, I just wanted okay. to go and make maybe a couple tattoos or something. Now it's like a whole fucking thing. I mean, that's... Yeah, I mean, it's my job. It's... it's <laughs> fun. <laughs> it's party time. Party with him. No, there's no fun. I work every day I'm there. There's nothing to do but work. That's it. You just cut the warp short and party at night. What if I didn't feel like it's just all pressure and it's all... Everything is everyone wanting something from me. Then, then that's not good for you. I <laughs> know. Man's always working on something. I can say that much. Like there's always some iron in the fire. And which is amazing too, because it kind of keeps me on the ball. And it, it just keeps me wanting to produce and create. And like I said, art for the sake of art. Maybe a little bit of ego, just wanting to say I'm here. You know, some kind of like base, somewhat of a base artistic kind of bend, which is like, I'm here, I, I, I'm, this is my mark I've left, you know, kind of thing. I think there's something about that. These are all the paintings that are in the... Yeah, my two-year autopsy. Let's see the back here. It's a good spot for me. Right? I don't feel like I'm an artist right now. I have in the past. You know, I don't feel like I've been creating lately, so it makes me feel less 
accomplished as, a, as an artist. Do you have any like concepts like started or? They're in my head, dude. What do I need to do? Either you do it or you don't. <laughs> yeah. There's not a thing that I want to do. Oh, I just right. like, I get ideas for things I want to do. And then I'm like, okay, you know, I'll fucking, you know, write them down or I have an idea about it and get some stuff and I want to do, I want to do other shit. I don't want to like do a fucking watercolor of a traditional test. Fuck that, you know, like, I want to do shit that's in my brain. I want to do cathartic work. Because, I don't know, that's, to me, that's what, that's what art is, is a, the expression of yourself and your point of view. If you don't have a point of view, what the fuck you got? And I think that's what makes people drawn to art, is they want, they, they, they feel the person's emotion or personality come through. Do you ever take extended time off to work on first No, don't remind me. I think I'm gonna do that soon. I need to, I need it. I have responsibilities though, I have two dogs, I can't like just go fuck off. <laughs> They're human. Jones! Motherfucker. Right? Ow! Hey, what, whose head's that? And you know, I think we change as people. I change as a person when I, as, as I age, and so I, I, I seek different things. And maybe things become more difficult than they were when I was younger, or maybe I just get tired of them, or... Maybe I have more work than I ever have had. Maybe it's a combination of all those things. Jones! Mr. Jones! Come! Trash down here! Leave it! Uh, all right, what am I standing here for? Because we are walking up here. I guess where you bring your dogs on, huh? Yeah, uh, sometimes. You get that, me and the dog drinking at the same time? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. <laughs> What kind of soundtrack are we doing for this thing? Kind of what? Soundtrack are we doing for this thing?